Hi uh, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Last week, I did a video on actions and events, and at the end of that video, I promised that I was going to show you some actual real-life uses for that kind of system. Now, we'll gloss over a few things again in this tutorial, but if you haven't already watched it, I suggest going watching that video, and I'll pop a link up right about there. So that'll give you more of an understanding of what we're doing here. But in this video, what we're going to do, we're going to clone an in-game time system from a game like Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing. Now, if you've played those games before, you'll know that they're not in real time. It's usually about two or three seconds equates to an in-game minute, for example. And that's easy enough to do on its own. But what we want to do, we want to make this a little bit more scalable. And what we want to do, we want to make events that can be tapped into so we can perform actions based on the time it is in the game. Now, that may sound a little bit confusing, but... When we get into it, you'll see exactly what I mean. So just before we get into it, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description. Go give him a follow on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what he's up to. Really great fella. And I also want to thank everyone supporting me over on Patreon. So that's Steve UK, Brandon Zill and Raf. You guys are fantastic. So let's take a quick look at the scene that I've got set up here. It's just a very basic scene, just a few sprites, and we have a car, and we also have a UI element to display in-game time. And if you're interested in the sprites that I've used for this, they're made by Mucho Pixels, and I'll link his itch page down in the description. So let's have a think about what we want. We want a back-end system that's going to run automatically and update the in-game time. Not only that, we want to be able to tap into that and trigger certain events at certain times. So the example that I'm going to use is we're going to set an arbitrary time, say half past 10, 10.30, and every time it hits 10.30, we want this car to just drive on past. So nothing too complicated. You can scale this however you need it in your game. This is just to show that we can trigger events based on this time. So let's start by creating the time manager script. So that's going to be time manager. And we'll open this up in Visual Studio. All right, so we're going to need a few things in here. First of all, we're going to set up uh, actions. And like I said, I went over actions in the previous video. So make sure you go and check that out if you're not familiar with them. So these are going to be public static actions. And remember, we need to be using a system namespace to gain access to the action type. And we want two different actions in this. We want to be able to tap into whether or not the minute or the hour has changed. So I'm going to call one on minute changed. And then I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to change it to on hour changed. So depending on what time we want our event to happen or how often we want our event to happen, we can tap into either of these actions. And we also want to keep a reference to what time it actually is. And I'm going to use properties for this because I want to make sure that you can't edit the time outside of this time manager script. So again, these are going to be public static. This time they're going to be ints and we'll set the minute. And to make it a property, we'll give it the get accessor and we'll make it a private set. So we can only ever change this inside of this class. And again, we want to copy that. But this time, we've got a reference to what hour it is. Next, we want to decide on how often we want the minute to change in-game based on real time. So the way that I'm going to do it in my game, I'm going to make it so every half a second real time increments the minute by one. So let's set that up. So that'll be a private float, minute to real time, and we'll set that to half a second, 0.5. And finally, we need another private float, which is just going to be our localized timer. Now, in our start method, we can set minute and hour to whatever we want. I'm just going to start mine at 10 o'clock, so we don't have to wait that long before we can actually trigger that event at 10.30. So, minute is going to equal zero, hour is going to equal 
10. And then to start off, we'll set our timer equal to our minute to real time. Next, we'll just go into our update. Now, many of you have probably done timers before, and this isn't really any different. So we want a minus time dot delta time from our timer. If the timer is less than or equal to zero, then that means our real time has elapsed and we want to increment the minute. So in here, we'll do minute plus plus, we'll add one to the minute, but then we need to check whether or not that's hit 60. If it's hit 60, we want to increment the hour and reset the minutes back to zero. So now if minute is greater than or equal to 60, we'll increment the hour instead or as well, set minute back to zero, and then outside of this, we wanna make sure that we set our timer back to our minute to real time. So now we have the timer running. That's gonna add one to the minute every half a second. As Soon as the minute hits 60, it's gonna reset that to zero and increment one onto the hour. Now that's all well and good, that's gonna work, but we wanna make sure that we trigger these actions in the relevant places. So we have on minute changed, and it's gonna to come to no surprise to you that we're gonna do that when we increment the minute. So all we need to do, we need to use that sort of like a method, but what we'll do, we'll do on minute changed, and we wanna make sure that there's something listening to that action. If it's not, and we try and call it, it's gonna be null, and we're gonna get a null reference exception. So we could wrap that in an if statement. We could check whether or not if on minute changed is not equal to null, and then we can call it. But there's a shorthand way of doing this. And the way that we do that, we can do on minute changed question mark dot invoke. So what that's going to do, the question mark is basically the null check. So if on minute changed is not equal to null, so something is listening to that event, we'll then invoke it. And we can do exactly the same in the hour. So that'll be on hour changed. And that should be our time manager class completed. Extremely simple, but now this is extremely versatile. And I'll show you exactly how we can utilize this. So if I come back over here, create a new C sharp script, and I'm just gonna call this time UI. Now if we open that up, we want to tap in to our on minute and then on our changed actions. And when that happens, we wanna update that on-screen text to tell us the time. So obviously the first thing we're gonna need is a public text mess pro UGUI, and that's gonna be our time text. And we're gonna to need to import text mesh pro here. And then we wanna to subscribe to those time manager actions in our on enable method. But if you remember from the last video, we also want to unsubscribe if we ever disable this object. So we'll just put in an on disable for now. And then finally, we need the method that we want to fire whenever the minute or the hour changes. So that's going to be update time. Now, really simple. All we're going to do is we're going to set time text dot text equal to, and then we'll just do a bit of string interpolation here. So the dollar sign and then speech marks. And we want that text to read our time manager dot minute colon time manager. That's the wrong way around. Time manager dot hour and then time manager dot minute. And just to make this look a little bit nicer, we want to make sure that we keep that lead in zero when we're less than 10 on the hour and the minutes. So to do that, you could actually do it in two different ways. This is a little handy tip for you. So usually you'd do dot two string and then you'd pass in the mask, which would be that. Now that would work perfectly fine. Every time it was say five seconds, it would read zero five. But again, there's a quicker way of doing this and a nicer way of doing it in my opinion. We just remove that two string. We put a call on after minute and then put double zero. That's basically just saying we want to mask this string with this format, and we can do that as well on the hour. All right, so now we're updating the time. Let's subscribe to those actions. So we want to set time manager dot on minute changed, and we'll add with the plus equals operator our update time method. And we also want to do that for a time manager dot on hour changed as well. So we'll update the time when the hour changes. And then really simply on disable, 
we'll change that plus equals to a minus equals. So we'll unsubscribe this method from this action if our time UI game object is ever disabled. So let's go and hook that time UI script up. We'll select our time block over here, which is just the, uh, you can't really see it because it's pretty much the same color as the ambient editor color, but I have a gray box with the time underneath it. So we'll attach our time UI script in and drag in our time text over here. And that should be it. If I was to play this game, it's going to subscribe to that event. It's going to automatically set it to 10 o'clock and then every half a second, we're going to tick over one minute at a time. So let's try that. And it didn't work. Why didn't it work? It didn't work because I don't have the time manager in the scene. It's a mono behavior. This needs to be in the scene as well. So we're just going to create an empty object, call it time manager, and we'll drag that on. That's all we need to do. Now it should work. And it does. Every half a second, we go up by one minute of in-game time. So that's all well and good, but now let's work on the car. So we're going to need a script for this car. Call it car, surprisingly enough. And open it up in Visual Studio. Now, we aren't going to need the start method in this, but we do need our on enable and on disable methods. And then we want a private void time check method in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to subscribe like we did before this time check method to on minute changed and on hour changed. Actually, we don't need on hour changed because we're doing it as 10.30. So if the hour changed, it can never actually be 10.30. So we can leave that one out. So we'll set our time manager dot on minute changed and we'll subscribe time check to that method. And then again, remember to unsubscribe it. And now in our time check, what we're going to do, we're going to check if time manager dot hour is equal to 10 and time manager dot minute is equal to 30. And some of you may have noticed a little bit of a cut there. As I was actually recording this, I realized a better way of doing it. So currently I haven't changed anything apart from I've removed the update method from this car because we're going to use a core routine to move the car instead. So let's go ahead and create that. So that's going to be a private IE numerator move car and we want to start that core routine during the time check so we'll do start core routine move car and then i'm just going to really quickly run through a rudimentary movement script that has nothing to do with this tutorial so there we go i've done a really quick movement script for my car it's probably not the best but that's not what this tutorial is all about so basically what's going to happen is every time a on minute change gets triggered we're going to run time check. Now, if during that check, our hour is 10 and our minute is 10, I've changed it from 30 to 10, just so we don't have to wait as long. Then we're going to start this movement routine to move the car from the left side of the screen to the right side. Now, if we jump back over, we see I've already attached the car script to our car game object. Now, if we hit play, we should see the car is going to move across the screen at 10 minutes past 10. So right about now. And it does. Brilliant. And that's going to loop every time it hits 10, 10. But what about if we want to change that? What if we want to run this car past every hour? Well, what we can do, we can change this on minute change to on hour changed. And again, remember to change that. And this time we'll do it every time the hour changes. So we can just get rid of that time check. And now every time the hour changes, we're going to get a car drive past. So let's run this and we'll see what happens. So we don't get it on the first call, the 10 o'clock call, because we're just setting it to that. But then whenever it hits 11 o'clock, we're going to hit the car moving along. Now, what I may do, I may speed this bit up because it's going to be quite boring and I imagine I'm going to run out of things to say before we hit the 12 o'clock just to prove that it does it every hour. So we're coming up to this 11 o'clock now. Let's have a look. We should be moving across. And there he goes. And there it is. 
So you can use this for any kind of events that you like. You could do a day and night cycle with this. So as soon as it hits like 8 p.m., start the sun setting, the moon rising, change everything to the nighttime sprites, and everything works well. The way that Stardew Valley uses this is each of the NPCs are actually on a timer. So on a Monday, they'll always do the same things. For example, Monday, 10 o'clock, one of the NPCs will go to the shop. They'll wait there until 12 o'clock. And then after that, it'll trigger a new event where they'll go and do some fishing, for example. And this is the perfect way that you can implement that kind of system into your games. You can tailor this however you like, subscribe any scripts to the on minute or on hour change, depending on what you need. And then you can do a validation check if it's the right time. If it is, fire off that event. So I hope that's been useful for you. If you liked it, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that standard YouTube stuff. You know what to do. But with that, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.